Good morning and welcome to our webcast presentation of Janice Hoops, my good friend, um, who runs Utah Hypnotherapy, and she's here to talk to us about empowering ourselves as women and getting what we really want out of life. So I'm super excited to hear from her today. And so here she is. Without further ado, Janice Hoops. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to scoot over here. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of Ashley's Empowered Women series. So Ashley was asking me earlier if, uh, not if, but we were discussing self-forgiveness. And when there have been times in our life where we felt that there was something we needed to forgive ourselves for, and as we talked, I realized that a big part of what I have forgiven myself for and sometimes still continue to need to forgive myself for is wasted time. Have you ever felt like you had completely wasted your time? I think often when we think of wasted time, we're thinking about getting lost on Facebook or watching TV longer than we'd intended to. But what I've needed to forgive myself for was for wasting what seemed like the first half of my life. I spent the first half of my life as a very unhealthy person. And I also felt that I was stupid that I had nothing to contribute. This all started when I was in first grade, and at the end of first grade, I was informed that I was going to be held back. And of course, how would a six-year-old interpret this information in any other way than you're not smart enough to go on? And so I began gathering this belief, this evidence into a file within myself. Feeling like I just didn't get things, that I didn't have anything to contribute, and I didn't have a voice. Shortly after this, I started to experience a lot of health issues. I would catch absolutely everything that went around, and I started to develop intense stomach problems. So I missed a lot of school, and that just contributed to those feelings of confusion and feeling clueless and stupid. I can remember a point when I had turned nine when my doctor began running a series of tests, x-rays and blood tests and whatever else doctors do to try to figure out what's going on with a young patient. And I can remember the day that he sat down with my mom and me, and I was sitting in one of those small child-sized chairs, and I was scared because I didn't know what else was coming, and the tests had not been comfortable. I can remember him telling my mom that what he recommended was that you keep Janice out of stressful situations and conversations. I didn't really understand what that meant. And it was years later before I learned that my mom struggled with chronic migraines and clinical depression. So to hear that kind of an order from the doctor must have been incredibly stressful on her. And I continued going forward, catching everything, being sick, and feeling absolutely not smart. Now jump ahead 20, well not 20 years, but jump ahead to my college years, to my early 20s. And I had to go home on medical leave, and I missed school for the next two years because of my health issues and my stomach issues 
and I had lost so much weight that it was scary. So I want to ask you, do you know what the word psychosomatic means? I started seeing a therapist when I got home from college and I was told that my issues were psychosomatic. Now psychosomatic simply means the body follows the mind or body and mind are related. But at the time, to me, psychosomatic meant it's all in your head, kid. And it made me feel like they were saying I was a phony. That made me feel even more anxious and out of control and depressed. I'm going to share my screen with you now. Let's see if I can get this to fit. Here we go. Psychosomatic. I'll catch up the slide a little bit. So being told that this was basically all in my head caused me to add it to my file. Those limiting beliefs that were stacking up inside of me became even bigger. And I started repeating this to myself again and again, like we all do. It's estimated that we think between 60 and 70,000 thoughts a day. And of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, so many of them are those limiting beliefs, that self-talk that we often default to. What labels are you repeating to yourself every day? What beliefs and information and limitations are you continuing to grow within yourself by focusing on it? Before my clients work with me, they often come in from a place of feeling that they are not good enough, that they're not deserving that they're not wanted. And believing these things has made their lives manifest these things just like my health problems. Sometimes I'm still stunned that I believed these huge lies about myself for so long that they held me prisoner for so long. And actually, that I held me prisoner for so long. And I know that the majority of people are still walking around believing these lies about themselves, believing the limiting things that they keep saying to themselves or accepting from others, and that it's keeping them from really tapping into and living the remarkable potential that's inside of every one of us. Well, I'm thrilled to say that I finally claimed my unique brilliance and my health. I learned the keys that unlock our limitless potential. And every day I am creating and manifesting the life that I want. So what do you want? Do you want to be on the slow track to what you want? Or do you want to be on the fast track to getting what you want? Go ahead and pull out a pen and paper or get to a blank page. I'm going to share with you the six keys to creating what you want in your life.
So with that blank page, go ahead and draw a line right down the center long way. And what we're going to do in a moment is identify what you do not want. Before people work with me, I ask them, what do you want? And most of the time, the answer that comes out of their mouth is a list of what they don't want. I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be angry all the time, and so on, and so on. And that's natural, that's a default in our own powerful brain because it's trying to keep us safe. It's always looking for danger and scary. But we have the ability with our remarkable conscious mind to determine what we're going to focus on and what we're going to believe. And as we choose the things that we focus on, then our remarkable subconscious mind starts looking for evidence to fill that file of belief. But since it's our default, I'm going to ask you to start by identifying what you do not want. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds to just begin jotting down anything you can think of on the left side of that page. What's showing up in your life right now that you really would like to see change? Whether it has to do with weight or relationships or work or philanthropy, those things that are not good in your life right now. So go ahead and list the things that you don't want. Ten more seconds. Great, and stop. Now you probably have a pretty decent list because, like I said, that's our default. It's often easy to go through and find the things that are pretty sucky in our lives. But once we know what we don't want, the next step is to identify what we do want. Because if we stay stuck in what we don't want, it's like we're driving in reverse in a car in a circle. <laughs> Just spinning around and around backwards, disoriented, unhappy, and not getting anywhere. To identify what you do want is to start shifting into the forward moving gears. You've got to know where you're going in order to get there. So now on the right side of that page, I want you to list what you do want. And the things that you listed in the don't want column, those are a jumping off point. So you don't necessarily have to write the exact opposite of that. Although you might, if you wrote, I'm not smart, then you might want to say, I am smart. Or you might say, I know what I need to know. Or I am uniquely brilliant. 
there are a million ways to use the don't wants as a springboard into something much more powerful for you. So I'm gonna give you two minutes to look for the inspiration in the list of don't want and really write down the things you do want in your life, in your relationships, in your work. What kind of legacy you want to leave on this planet? Go. Ten more seconds. You can come back to that, but I hope that you've been able to create somewhat of a list to start you on that path towards manifesting what you really want in your life. Looks like my screen might be stuck. Give me just a moment. There we go, sort of. <laughs> All right, so the third key to getting what you want is to believe. You must believe in order to achieve. And the slides will catch up in a moment, I'm sure, but When you are wanting to plant a tomato plant so that you can have abundant tomatoes and make your famous salsa, <laughs> there it is. You have to believe in the ultimate fruit that's going to come forth when you're planting that seed. If you don't believe the fruit is going to come, Just a moment, Ashley. We've had a screen crash.
There we go. Thank you. So if you plant a tomato seed and you don't believe that the fruit is going to come, what are you going to do? Are you likely to nurture it? And if you do believe that ultimately this seed can produce beautiful fruit, how does that affect your behavior towards nurturing this plant? Giving it what it needs, water and sunshine and nutrients, admiration. <laughs> and our dreams are the same way. Even though we do not yet see the manifestation of what we want, we must believe it as if it already exists in order to nurture it to the point that it does exist. And that brings us to our next exercise, which is called Once Difficult, Now Easy. So grab out a fresh piece of paper. And I invite you to write down those things that you've experienced in your life that once were difficult and now they're pretty dang easy. The first one I think of, of course, is walking. Before we even knew to feel discouraged by falling down again and again and again, we just kept getting up, putting our hands on the furniture and, and scooting around until we could take a few steps without holding on and then falling down, getting up. The evidence of that is that today, most of us are able to walk where we want to without thinking about it. Tying shoes, learning to drive, oh my goodness. I learned to drive in a stick shift and it was extremely terrifying and there was a lot of gear grinding, which was terrifying for my parents. But now I can drive a stick shift without even thinking about it. And in fact, have a great deal of fun when I get the opportunity to do so. Skills and work and so forth. So again, I'm going to give you 90 seconds to write down those things that you've experienced in your life that once were difficult for you, and now they've become almost second nature. Ready? Go. Thirty more seconds. Five more seconds. And stop. Just look at this list you've created. Isn't it amazing to see all of the things that you've accomplished in your life? And these are just the things that you were able to think of off the top of your head. I'm sure that as the day goes on, you'll continue to have things pop into your mind. Of all of the things that you do so easily now, that at one point or another was quite challenging for you. 
This exercise is to show you that those things that right now you think are difficult can also become easy. As you put your focus on them, as you nurture them, as you move in that direction, they become more and more familiar, more natural to you. So that you manifest what you want in your life. And I think often when we think, I want to manifest something in my life, we think it's this thing at the end of a journey, but actually the journey itself is the act of manifesting. That with each step we take, with each experience we have, we're learning and growing and evolving. Whether you deem an experience you just had as a success or a failure, I don't even use those words. To me, they are all learning opportunities. Opportunities to say, wow, I'm going to do that again. Or, heck, no, I'm not going to do that again. But now I know to do something different, and I'm figuring out what that is now. That's the journey of manifesting. And that brings us to our fourth key for getting what you want, and that's coaching. You know, most of us have done average things. Gone to high school, maybe some college, read self-help books, watched some webinars. And yet we're still where we are. And I understand that because I've been there. But the really successful people, they go beyond what average people are doing. They look for coaches, teachers, and mentors who can show them the way, who can inspire and uplift them, who can cheer them on and give them a shortcut. And that leads to massive acceleration into the life you want. So if you needed to take a drive across the country, this beautiful, very large country of ours, would you rather do that by driving through one neighborhood after another with all the stop signs? Or would you rather get on the freeway, pedal to the metal, using your GPS and getting there as quickly as possible? The turning point for me was when I was a junior in college. I had taken two years off because of my illness, went back to school, and just felt like what I was studying wasn't really for me. And as I took some time to consider my options, one of my friends told me about massage therapy school. She suggested I take a look at it, and I, to be honest, thought she was crazy. <laughs> it was one of the most foreign, scary possibilities that I could ever have considered. And yet, the more I thought about it, the more it resonated. Pieces started to fall into place that brought me to the point of going to massage school. And as I jumped into this whole new world, I discovered my unique brilliance. Because the question isn't, are you intelligent? The question is, how you are intelligent. And I found my place. I had a passion and a gift that developed into a skill and became not only easier, but so second nature that doing body work was absolutely intuitive for me. I felt such happiness. I felt like I finally had control over my life and my decisions. And my health began to improve day by day until I was fully healthy. 
I started my own business. Again, last thing in the world I ever thought I would do. And it's all because I found the teachers and coaches that taught me the shortcuts. That cheered me on and acknowledged and basically pulled out of me my unique brilliance. I know that there is a coach for each and every one of you to help you get where you want to go. Many years later, I ended up injuring my shoulder from lifting some very heavy things I shouldn't have been lifting. And I went several months still doing massage, basically with one arm, thinking it would get better. I didn't yet know the mindset of things. And my shoulder wasn't ready to get better, but to this day, I feel that it was a message to help me get to my next aha. The next thing that I would feel such passion about, and that was going to hypnotherapy school. And there in practice at hypnotherapy school, I did a session about my shoulder, and within a week, it was functioning again. After nine months of not working. And this was when I began to learn the power of our mind, our mindset, what we focus on. This is where I learned how to rewire all of those programs that are running inside of us. Those default programs that keep telling us, I can't, I won't, I don't deserve. Because those are just random programs, thoughts, and ideas that we have gathered through our entire lives. And most of them came into us when we were younger than 10 years old. A walking subconscious sponge taking in everything without the wisdom, the knowledge, or the independence to understand what we were taking in. And as a coach and a hypnotherapist, I'm here to help you grow your fruit. To go through each of those steps in your path to greatness, satisfaction and happiness. To help you identify the actions that are needed in order to follow through on the new mindset and understanding that you gain and to manifest what you truly want in your life. So let me ask you, are you ready to have the life you want? If things stay the way they are today, what will your life look like in a year? What will your life look like in five years, 10 years? When is now a good time to start? And if my message has resonated with you, and you feel that I would be a good coach for you, then I have an offer for you. I've reserved some spots in the next two weeks in my schedule to sit down with you for a free coaching session. And if this is compelling to you, then I ask you to text your first and last name and the word coaching to the number on your screen, 801-360-8322 by tonight at 6 p.m. And when we sit down together, I will personally help you to more deeply identify what you want. To make it such an exciting, inspiring, passionate vision for yourself. 
I'll help you identify what's in the way and delete that program and replace it with one that serves you and propels you forward on your path to your dreams. So that you leave that session with clarity about next steps and how to manifest your dreams into reality. And if by the end of our time together, we feel like it's a good fit, then I'll ask you if it's okay to share next steps with you, what the possibilities would be to continue working with one another. So again, if you would like to reserve one of these limited spots, just text your first and last name and the word coaching to me by 6 p.m. tonight. And I know that there is a great, wonderful, peaceful, happy life meant for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Denise, for sharing with us. Wow. I was taking notes. And how powerful is that? When is a good time to start? And that's the question if you want to ask yourself moving forward. When is a good time to start? Like she said, everybody has a perfect mentor for them. When is the right time to call? When is the right time to approach that person and say, hey, I want to know what you know. I want to have what you have. So get up for Janice Hoops. We're so glad to have her here and hope you'll reach out if that resonates with you and that you'll join us next time. Thanks for being here. Thank you.